give me a premium to enjoy the white space that comes along with this penthouse unit. Something that's very interesting is that on this particular step, which is step 91, where we drop off points, you have a gym. So we're gonna head in. Let's go. Mission control. We have lift off. All right, welcome everybody to another episode of our new launch review series. Today, we're going to cover another very exciting project that is in the D26 area. And with me in the studio are actually two new faces. Maybe I'll just let them have an introduction of themselves first. Yongjun. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Yongjun and uh, happy to be here to be in the part of the new launch series and uh, excited to show you guys uh, what Lento Mansion has to offer. Ramsey. All right, my name is uh, Ramsey. I'm here uh, with uh, PRB as an uh, Associate Listing Manager. Yeah, uh, of course, first time here at our new launch uh, review series. So happy to be here. And yeah, shall we? Okay, so today, as what Yongju has mentioned, we're going to share with you more about Lentor Mansion. Earlier on, if, uh, if you have watched our Lentoria series, we have also mentioned that there's a lot of hypes going in this whole entire Lentor Hill area. And today, we're going to cover the latest addition in that space. Uh, and this is done by Guoco Land. Mm. Uh, without further ado, probably I'll let Ramsey share with you more about the project facts. So Ramsey, let's go. All right, so mm. the project that we will be reviewing today is mm. called Lentor Mansion. Uh, this is the third uh, launch by Guoco Land in mm. the whole entire uh, Lentor Hills estate. Mm. Okay, so of course, I mean, uh, if you've been watching our previous new launch reviews, uh, we've done so many different types of uh, reviews uh, in the Lentor Hills estate, so you can go and check them out. But today, we will focus a bit more on uh, Lentor Mansion. Now, Lentor Mansion would be the fourth project that is, uh, sorry, the fifth project that is mm. coming up in the whole entire Lentor Hills estate. Uh, where is it particularly? It's in District 26. Uh, it's in the uh, Lentor region, which is mm. quite strategically place within the northeast uh, region in Singapore. Uh, if you look at the plot ratio, it's 2.1, but I think uh, particularly we need to take note of the land size because this is by far uh, the largest land size uh, land plot there so far mm, out exactly. of uh, all those uh, that have already gone through the GLS as well as the new launch uh, uh, sales mm. over there. Okay, uh, of course, 99 year lease hold, total number of units surprisingly is uh, about 533. So later mm. on, when we go through the site plan, you will see how the developer has masterfully uh, uh, utilized the whole space over here. Mm. Uh, in fact, uh, this is a this project has a different proposition as compared to the previous two that Guoco Land has uh, launched, uh, which is Lentor Modern as well as Lentor Hills Residences. Mm. Mm. Okay, so uh, TOP is expected to be around uh, second quarter of uh, 2028, estimated there. And this is uh, this project also has a very unique uh, construction method uh, as compared to the other projects. This one is using PPVC. Later, we'll go, we will go in detail uh, exactly how mm. the construction method has uh, affected the floor plans as well as uh, the, the uh, construction of the units over here. Mm. All right, so total, uh, if you were to look at the site plan, uh, total about six units. Uh, we uh, sorry six blocks. We have uh, three low rise towers. We have three high rise towers. Yeah. So uh, the uh, orientation uh, or the whole entire site plan of the Lentor Mansion will look like this. Uh, uh, this is just an artist impression. Right. Uh, very good, I would say. Uh, space in between each different block. So uh, it's not uh, so. Uh, it's not so uh, obvious here, but definitely later when we go through the site plan, when mm. we look it from the top-down approach, right. you mm. see that the distance between the <coughs> blocks are actually very, very well distanced. Mm. So in a sense, uh, of course, this is in line with uh, Guaco Land's uh, whole uh, uh, vision of uh, creating uh, the whole entire Lentor Hills estate to be mm. in one with the nature, which was previously okay. what Lentor Hills is all about. Yeah. So yeah. this is your concept uh, that they have done. Correct. So if you were to look at the development concept, so basically uh, Lentor, uh, Lentor Mansion over here, uh, the developer got the inspiration from black and white bungalows. Mm. Why black and white bungalows? Because black and white bungalows is a, a signature, uh, one of the signature, uh, I would say, uh, themes of uh, the old historic yet uh, luxurious uh, Singapore uh, landscape back mm. then. Yeah, so uh, basically, uh, the developer wanted to pay homage to uh, Singapore's heritage colonial bungalows. Mm. La, mm. Right? Mm. And uh, they very much uh, focus on this uh, concept called the broad landscape concept. So previously, what was Lentor? Lentor was used to be a forested area, mm. correct? Yes, yes. So uh, currently right now, they are building up the whole Lentor Hills estate. What they, are, what they plan to do, or what they envision to do rather, is to, uh, in their project, especially in this Lentor Mansion, mm. Lentor Mansion to select uh, particular landscapes and uh, floral species mm. that will blend quite seamlessly with the surrounding, uh, the, with the surrounding vegetation. Mm. So in a sense, uh, it's a very, I would say, 
a very nice, uh, seamless kind of uh, uh, integration of the new developments with the current existing uh, uh, nature that they plan to do it mm. over here. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and of course, uh, lastly, uh, Lantom mentioned is a. Uh, uh, angled more towards the luxury kind of uh, yeah. theme. Yeah, mm. so uh, in uh, this project over here, it is luxury meets convenience. Mm. Why? Because uh, the whole proposition over here is quite luxurious, yet it is uh, just a few minutes walk away from the Lentor MRT station on the Thompson East Coast Line. Later, we'll share a bit more with that as well. Right. And uh, it is very, very convenient in terms of uh, future connectivity as well to other parts of Singapore. Mm. Uh, mm. You've got the North-South Corridor that's mm. going to come up in yes. the late uh, 2028, around mm. 2030, around there as well. That's going to bring added convenience and connectivity on top of your current CTE already. Mm. I think yeah. uh, quickly go back again. Mm. I think we also would like to share in terms of number of car park lots yes. because of the close connectivity to mm. the train station. Henceforth, um, you don't really get one to one lots, but yeah. I would say that pretty much uh, quite a good number of lots available for 86 mm. yep. um, lots or uh, electric lots as well, yep. right? Which is two of them. Yeah. And thereafter, oh, sorry, five of them at basement one. Mm. Uh, and of course, uh, this is also one of the project that comes with a childcare centre. Yep, correct. So right. in terms of the car park lots, is uh, of course across two levels, basement one and basement mm. two. Mm. Uh, as you can see currently right now, 480 car park lots generally uh, for all the residents over here. Mm. It is not per se one is to one. Uh, but definitely, uh, uh, developers see it as uh, sufficient because why? Of the very close uh, proximity to MRT station right. as well as transport nodes. Mm. Yeah. Right. Mm. And as you can see, very interestingly also, I mean, uh, uh, one more thing just to add on is this project is also quite future-proof. you got got... Uh, five EV lots already that's right, already yeah. been going to be installed in this yeah. area mm. and one more interesting thing is that there will be a childcare centre here as well yeah, yeah. so the childcare centre if uh, you look at the site plan will actually be below uh, mm. block it's below block number block 58, 58. Yeah, yeah correct mm. so block 58 around there there will be a childcare uh, centre child and right yeah, it's going to be mm. quite a uh, the childcare centre is also going to take up quite a huge uh, uh, space over mm. here 600 square mm. metres mm. so in a sense uh, this is great because uh, uh, very very convenient for you especially if you are young families with uh, young kids toddlers uh, uh, you can just drop your kids off here and just head off to work and then come back you don't have to travel so far yeah, uh, just to pick up your kids. Yeah. So, at a very convenience over here. I think so. it's all about future proving mm. the whole entire location. Yeah. Uh, mm. And I think Goko, I think we'll also talk about it later on as well. Mm. Like Goko being the master developer, so to speak. La, yep. Where they comes in, they want to design the whole entire space itself. So, they have a um, added motivation to make it much more seamless and uh, very family oriented as well. Yep, Actually, what uh, Ramsey has mentioned about in terms of the whole entire look and feel, this is basically how it looks like mm. in terms of the artist's impression. I would say that the colors are very much in team to the whole entire vegetation area mm. are very much like oak um, color uh, and and thereafter you also have this uh, black and white bungalow so this is actually their signature clubhouse yes. which they designed it to be very much uh, like a black and white team yep. kind of style so this will be like the centerpiece when you enter the development your guests will drop off right here they mm. will be able to see the whole entire building itself so uh, it actually uh, shows off a very good luxury kind of team mm. so of course when it comes to developer wise uh, they are none other than Goko Land yep. so they mm. are no stranger to this uh, market here in Singapore. Correct, correct. La, correct la. So, the, uh, Goko Land is actually uh, uh, is taking on the role as a master developer of Lentor Hills, as you mentioned mm. earlier. Why is that so? Because, I mean, if you were to look at the whole uh, Lentor Hills landscape currently right yeah. now, uh, I would say about 10 to 11, 11 land plots that were being uh, uh, segmented mm. for, for residential, for, for residential yeah. use. And the first is being the, of course, the mixed development land plot there at uh, Lentor Modern. Yeah. This is Lentor mm. Modern? Yeah, correct. And uh, Goko Land is the overall uh, winning uh, bidder for Lentor Modern. Mm. And they, I think naturally they took on the responsibility of, okay, right now, because I am taking up, I have taken up this uh, mixed D development uh, landscape over here. Mm. I am overall going to be the one that is going to be uh, creating the whole direction for Lentor area. Mm. Yeah. So as you can see over here, Lentor Modern and then uh, Lentor Hills was uh, launched. The second one, right? Yeah, the then second one followed was by launched, Hillock, followed by Hillock Green. Green. Hillock Green is of course a uh, is a mix. Uh, sorry, it's a combined uh, developer. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Lentoria. you have Lentoria, Lentoria, which is the latest one that yeah. has been Lentoria. launched over the weekend. And yeah. then lastly, the fifth one, which is uh, the one that we're reviewing now, is mm. Lentor Mansions. Yeah. yeah. So as you can see, uh, overall the whole entire landscape is quite shaping up to be a private kind of exclusive. Mm. Mm. Uh, residential landscape over here and mm. this is great because this complements the current landscape that is already in Lentor mm. which is quite generally uh, I would say nature uh, low rise you've got your landed estates uh, 
uh, on the left, you got your Tagore, uh, you got the Tagore Teacher's Road, Estate. Yeah. 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 So teacher's uh, Estate is below here. Correct. Mm. And then uh, right below Lentoria is where you have the your HDB clusters yeah, as well. Which is mm. the Amokyo area. Yeah. Mm. And then after that, uh, closer to the right, you also got your landed estate uh, back there in uh, Florissa Park. Mm. Yeah, correct. So I would say this is quite a strategic location if you were to look at uh, the overall uh, site plan over mm. here mm. as well as the, the, the whole uh, map over here. La. Yeah. But I think Guoco, being the master developer, mm. they also have a lot of proven, um, I would say, yes. uh, projects that they have done over the years. Yeah, correct. So looking at that, I mean, they, they technically speaking, they have like two different kind of series, right? As you have yes, mm, correct. Know right here. Yeah. You so have for series. Yeah. So for Guoco Lens, uh, okay. So Guoco Lens currently right now, I think for their newer developments that they are uh, uh, they are taking on right mm. now, uh, mainly you can see uh, quite a two different distinct patterns or two different distinct series over here. Yeah, yeah which is uh, the modern series as well as the mansion series. Now, the modern series is more catered towards uh, connectivity uh, and that lifestyle. Yeah, mm. so as you can see, Martin Modern was the first to be launched. Mm. Yeah, Martin Modern was the first to be launched, followed by your Mita Modern. And where Mita Modern is, of course, is right at the heart of uh, Bugis. Mm. Yeah, it is just right beside uh, Bugis uh, Junction mm. and the Bugis MRT Interchange. Mm. Yeah, and Right opposite would then be your whole Guoco land, la, basically yeah. your Guoco Midtown and uh, Midtown Bay and all that kind of right. thing. So Lantau Modern was also created with the same vision. Mm. Yeah, to be uh, a project which uh, provides lots of amenities mm. as well as convenience. Mm. Now, if you look at the Mansion Series, now Mansion Series is uh, more, uh, I would say, geared towards luxury. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, of course, the first uh, Mansion Series that was uh, launched uh, under Guoco land would then be your Mayor Mansion. Uh, this is, of course, in the prestigious uh, Mayor Enclave uh, mm. in, the, in D15. Uh, Coast and the second itineration would then be Lentor Mansion. Yeah, so I would say uh, the, the, the Mansion series would be very, very comparable to the luxury projects that you can find in CCR. Mm. Yet, uh, for, for Lentor Mansion, you are actually buying into an OCR project. So the pricing that you are actually looking at would then be in terms of the new launch would be in terms of OCR pricing. Mm. Yes. So I, I feel this is a very good proposition because uh, not only are you buying something that is uh, OCR pricing, uh, yet you are getting a product which is quite comparable, that is quite competitive to the uh, CCR projects as well in mm. terms of quality in terms of uh, luxury proposition yeah, yeah right. just to add on also because the mansion and the mansion and the modern series basically they have never been OCR area la. so mm. for the mansion and modern series to be now in OCR I think it's a it's a telltale sign that you know if buyers are looking for you know they have been fans of Goko Land fans of you know how Goko Land built their projects mm. their developments the 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 built uh, the built um uh, quality and all that. I think that the Lentor area is somewhere that you can find find in OCR and I think it's, it's going to be very rare. Yep. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. So this is actually the, the path, right? This is like the URA master plan. Correct. Right? So as you can see over here, this is basically uh, Guoco Land's uh, vision so far for the whole entire Lentor mm, Hills estate. Mm. So the shaded plots over here are the shaded plots, uh, the plots that are actually uh, uh, bought over by uh, uh, Coco Coco Land. Land, right. Yeah, correct. So first plot that you see will be the Lentor Modern. So mm -hmm. currently it's under construction. It, it has a direct connectivity to Lentor uh, MRT station, one mm. of the exits over there, which is at the corner of the whole Lentor Modern. Mm. And of course, uh, you have a commercial podium la, at the bottom. Mm. So that is where you have your amenities. Like for example, uh, there will be supermarket, there will be retail, there will be F&B outlets. Mm. So this uh, Lentor Modern is actually the anchor uh, development in the whole Lentor Hills estate. Mm. Yeah. And uh, of course, then Guoco Land would then build the surrounding uh, developments uh, to complement uh, the, the anchor development over here. So they built Lentor Hills residences. Uh, I mean, if you want to know more about Lentor Hills residences, please go watch our new launch uh, series of that we cover. And then after that, the third itineration would then be a Lentor Mansion. Uh, Lentor Mansion sorry. And uh, of course, uh, Guoco Land recently has also won the bid for the fourth uh, land plot. Uh, for their very fourth land plot, which is there, la, Lentor Central over there. Mm. Yeah, so that's also another huge land plot that can yield close to about 500 odd units as mm. well. So overall, I would say uh, land, uh, Goko Land is really, really uh, shaping up the Lentor uh, area. Of course, they are working hand in hand with uh, government uh, agencies. Uh, they are quite aligned with government's vision of uh, how they would like to build up the Lentor Hills estate as well. Mm. Right. Mm. A lot of things about Goko in the whole entire yeah. area. La. So Correct. it's a very exciting path. So this has been really transformed over the years. Uh, never seen before. Uh, back then, you know, for mm. Lentor, nobody has even thought about that before. Mm. And right now, Goko comes in, they have a vision. They want to like you know rejuvenate the whole entire place. So of course, Lentor mentioned uh, it's also in a very good location. Um, Ramsey has covered in terms of the area-wise. It is just right on the outskirts of Amokyo area. So in terms of like 
amenities wise, I don't think that you are short of anything much. Yep. Uh, once your know, Lentor mansion is ready, I believe Lentor Modern will also be already up and running already. Mm. So which means that you do get access to your supermarket, you know, all your um, some of the shops right there. If you want to go into the wet market and stuff like that, you also can go right, um, go into the Amokyo town, which is just right around the corner. So yep. I think that in terms of the whole entire connectivity wise, um, it is definitely in a very good location. So of course, riding on that, uh, recently, I think just this is just only like recent yeah, over this past this week only, right? Yep. Um, they have announced, I mean, credits to Street Stunts for this image. Uh, they have also announced that the Thompson East Coast Line Stage 4 will also commence service uh, from June 23rd onwards. So, which means that the whole entire brown line, so to speak, will be very much operational, mm. where it can basically go from your Lentor area towards the east part of Singapore mm. uh, in a very, very short period of time as compared to before. La. Correct. Right. Yeah. So, this is also a very much high-level map of where Lentor Mansion is all about. So, you mm. can really clearly see that uh, we are right here in a in the fringe of the whole entire Yochukang Amokyo Township. So in terms of if you want to go for all your amenities wise, uh, Amokyo Hub is just right around the corner. I mean, of course, uh, when you drive, probably expect about ten minutes thereabout. Uh, but of course, the more important aspect of Lentor Mansion would actually be um, this particular school right here. I think this is basically one of the key. Um, selling point for Lentor Mansion yep, exactly. uh, and to the fact that we have also done up a little map just to show uh, where CHIJ is which is right here uh, and uh, within a kilometer's radius uh, Lentor Mansion would generally be I would say clearly more close to 100% uh, yeah, about the 90, units would 90 to 95% of the whole yeah, entire land right. although we do not commit at uh, end yeah. of the day it is really down to MOE uh, they will decide yes, right? Correct, but yeah. ultimately when we look at the whole map uh, based on this rendering, we clearly can see that Lentor Mansion would generally falls within the one kilometer range to CHIJ mm. St. Nick's. Yeah. So I think this is also one of the key factor of the projects and a kind of differentiation. So let's say, for example, if you want to go in, into that area right now and you are clearly, um, your key decision factor in purchasing a unit right there will be CHIJ, then naturally you are not, uh, you don't really have a lot of projects right there, mm. new launch. Mm. Uh, Lentoria definitely is 100% within uh, one kilometer from CHIJ. Lentor Hills Residences, partial of that. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, depending on the, the what the developers or the salesperson tells you, whether is it the the, the eastern, I mean, the, the left side units yeah, or the left side blocks or the right side, right side, right side, right side right blocks and yeah. stuff like that. But clearly, um, Hillock Green will not be. Uh, Lentor Modern will not be as well. Yeah. But of course, Lentor Modern has its own KSP, which is the connectivity to mixed, develop, Correct. mixed development. Mall, yeah. Yeah. Mm. The Lentor Central uh, land, which uh, Coco Land just got recently, I believe this will be also not within a kilometers yep. from CHIJ, which also means that land Goko will have to think of a different um, differentiation to yes. to market this particular product. Mm. But yeah. right now, today, Lentor Mansion definitely enjoys the one kilometers range to CHIJ techniques. Correct. Mm -hmm. And this is what we call the parents' uh, attraction effect. Yeah. Mm. Of our mode analysis. Yeah, uh. correct. Of our, of our mode analysis. And if you were to look at this area, very, very unique. Uh, in fact, CHIJ techniques, as you mentioned, is the one of the anchoring uh, points as to why uh, there's always quite very strong demand. Uh, mm. in clearly, of, you look at Panorama, yeah, you know. Correct. Right? You look at Panorama, you look at the Amo residence, yeah. uh, new launch as well. Fully, uh, almost fully taken up uh, right. within a sales launch. Mm. Yeah, so definitely, definitely, this is one of the factors that is anchoring this project as well. Yeah. Mm. Right. So of course, the next one, maybe I'll let Yongjun share uh, a little bit. This is mm. basically the land pricing. But land pricing, just to be very uh, transparent as well and to disclaim, the land pricing is very transparent, meaning to say that you get to know how much the land is being sold to the developer, but that does not necessarily translate to the actual PSF that the developer yep. will launch on the launch day. Uh, basically, this is basically their purchase price, but ultimately, they will still factor in their uh, profit margin. They will still factor in some of the other guidelines from the, Singa, from the government as well. Yeah. So, so I think that uh, if you look at this, uh, this, uh, this, this map, right, actually, what you can, one thing you can realise is that Lentor Mansion has the largest uh, site area in mm. terms... So, you can see it's 20,000... Uh, 21,000 square meters. Which Double Lentorio, in fact. Exactly. Yeah. So, I think this is the most, um, uh, what would people think that, okay, so if they are launching it, uh, if this land is sold as 21,000 square meters, mm. ideally, there will be way more units. Mm. So, as we understand from what Ramzi said, there's only fi 533 units, which is, of course, it does... Um, uh, satisfy the, the factor that, you know, it hits the volume effect of at least 300 units. But yet, uh, it will make us also think that eh, if there's only 533 units with such a land area, how much of the segmentation in terms of landscaping and mm. facilities is going to be to the ratio of the build-up? Mm. Right, so I think that it's going to be quite healthy, and it might be a possibility that you know, okay, they're going to build, uh, have more spaces for greenery as mm. well as uh, landscaping, lah. 
Correct. So just to put it into yep. perspective, right? If mm. you compare Lentor Mansion right here, which is 533 units at 21,000 square meters land size, Lentor Hill at 17,000 land size, uh, which is about 4,000 land uh, square meters smaller, yeah. mm. actually has more units right yeah. there. Correct. Right. And likewise for Lentor Modern as well. So you clearly you can see that uh, the developers will want to give uh, a very healthy number of units mixed right there. Yeah, uh, but at the same time, having a largest land plot, which means that they will be able to give a wide more array of facilities that we'll share later on. Correct. Of course, of, of course on, a, on the land highest bid, we got it, uh, land, as in Guoco Land got it at 984, mm. 80, uh, in, a, in terms of PSF, which mm. ideally, of course, would be naturally be lower than the rest of the, the yeah. Lentor projects that have been built so far, including yeah. uh, Hillock Green. Mm. And if you calculate back uh, forward, uh, in terms of, you know, um, Calculating the estimated break even mm. uh, PSF per plot ratio that mm. would equate to around one seven nine cent. But of course, uh, just to echo on what Winch said just now, sometimes when you have a lower uh, land bid price, and of course you c you use settlers parables, you compare the, to the same kind of uh, uh, assumptions, mm. one seven nine seven break even price. It might not be equate equating to the eventual selling price mm, that what mm. developers are going to sell at. Yeah. Of course, uh, this is in conjunction with the fact that, you know, there is the harmonization rule that yeah. came about. Mm. And I think the harmonization rule also states that because the AC ledgers uh, are no longer going to be uh, calculated uh, as in going to be sold by the developer. So it might be, you know, interesting find to what to identify what is going to be the eventual yeah. selling price. Of course, we yeah. have a couple of numbers that we can share later mm. on as yep. well. Uh, we'll delve into the numbers later. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, I mean, this is just showing uh, the the current supply that that uh, current residential, su uh, residential supply of the new launch yeah. uh, projects here in Lentor uh, but I think uh, if we go on to the next slide you can see that uh, how is the current supply being uh, received mm. uh, uh, by the buyers currently so as you can see uh, project to project from Lentor Modern all the way to currently right now uh, just recently launched as well Lentoria mm. you can see that the, the launch sales uh, of course at the launch weekend uh, you can see that there's a general trend that you uh, see it is generally decreasing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, a few reasons why. Uh, of course, number one, I mean, Lentor Modern was uh, the hype of the, the whole entire estate over here. Right. So generally, it being a mixed D as well, I think uh, uh, pros uh, buyer's perspective was very, very uh, 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 appealing. La, I would mm. say it's very, very appealing to, to buyers, uh, which is why uh, it also reflects in the overall uh, take-up rate at mm. 84%. Uh, Lentor Hills, of course, I... Uh, it being quite a very huge uh, development as well, over close to 600 odd units. Uh, generally, most of the uh, residential units over here are also within uh, the 1KM uh, to CHIO Phoenix, mm. and that will also uh, prove to be one of the uh, strong points in this area. Why? Because if you look at uh, Hillock Green, which is uh, above uh, Lentor Hills residences mm. and out of the 1KM radius, mm. generally you see that the take-up rate currently uh, at, at launch sales is only about 28%. If you look at the current sales, it's, uh, it's about 38.19%. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so I would say that uh, Lentor Hills has one more uh, added uh, advantage. strong factor, mm. La, mm. added advantage. And uh, Lentor Mansion also possess the same uh, yep. added advantage as well. But I think riding mm. on that, we also have to be mindful as well. Mm. Uh, looking at the launch time, we all know that 2023 is also yep. the year of a lot of new launches. Mm. Um, definitely projects that is in the first half of the year of 2023, they do enjoy quite a good healthy um, launch numbers yep. during the launch weekend but mm. thereafter uh, when we are running into the second half of the year itself we tend to see that the numbers start to taper down you know gets um, uh, lesser as well yep. so I think it's more like riding onto the whole entire I think we have also been saying that over and over again I think it's more like um, some form of like a fatigue that's happening in the market mm. or buyers they do know that there's a lot of options available in the market they tend to get a bit more choosy they, they tend yes, to get, you know, wait for some of the new launchers, they want to see the compare the pricing as well. Yeah. Uh, which is also one of the reasons why you look at Lentoria. Although this project, um, you know, is hundred percent within CHIJ. Mm. Um, technically speaking, if you look at the three beta's, it should go. You know, uh, yep. it should get right, quite yeah. a good traction yeah. Yeah. Because considering that it fulfills the Paris attraction effect, you know, stuff like that. But Lentoria being the smallest project right there, people also are a bit more mindful as well. Mm. You know, in terms of the volume effect, in terms of the number of transactions, or in terms of the number of units right there. Uh, also, maybe in terms of uh, the amount of facilities that's available in the whole entire mm. project. And of course, to note, to note also that the launch date for Lentoria and Lentor Mansion are very quite... Close. Yeah, it's very, yeah. very close. So, I think people who are eyeing at both Lentoria and Lentor yeah. Mansion, right, mm. they might want to take the opportunity to visit both first before yeah. making a decision. Yes, correct. So, Lentoria was launched first, which is... And, and, and I think was widely publicized. Okay, Lentor Mansion is going to come next. Mm. People who went to 
Santoro, they, they'll be like, okay, uh, I'm going to visit Lentor Mansion mm. to see what's better for me in yeah. terms of facilities, in terms of the unit design, the layout, etc. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And, and just to uh, write on uh, Yongjun's point, because Lentoria and Lentor Mansion are, in terms of the uh, characteristics of the project, there are two different projects. Mm. So Lentoria is uh, the smallest land plot, mm. Lentor Mansion currently is the largest land mm. plot. Yet, uh, you can see uh, in terms of the proposition that they have, Lentoria, when we look at, uh, I mean, previously when we looked on uh, the facilities, uh, they don't have a tennis court. It's yeah. pretty much quite a smaller de- development. It's definitely a smaller development. Yeah, correct. Yeah. But when it comes to Lentor Mansion, you have full facilities. Yeah. You have 50 meter lap pool. Later on, we will we'll touch on this. Brings yeah, me correct. to the side map. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So I think if you look at the side map, uh, from the top down approach, uh, you can see that, okay, so we are right below where Lentor Hill Residences mm. is. So if Lentor you see Hill from, right correct, right. so Lentor Hill Residence is above uh, Lentor Mansion. And I think it's quite easy to navigate around, you know, Lentor Mansion, knowing mm. that they are just six blocks in total, mm. uh, three of which are the higher towers, which are the top floor of uh, 16 levels, mm. which is uh, Tower 60, Tower 62, and 64. Then Tower 58, 56, and 52 would be the those that have the highest floor of uh, uh, eight, eight, floor. La- eight floors. Yeah. So blocks. the main entrance is where you see uh, at 31, at right at the bottom. Mm. And then uh, I think it's, it's good that Gokoland made it in such a way that they know that the future bus stop is going to be right beside the, uh, the, the main entrance. Mm. And they created a side gate the first side gate which is uh, right next to the to the to the bus stop mm. so I think that it was, it's going to be convenient for people you know who stay at block 56 58 to to have the quickest access you know to the side gate mm. for for ease of access to the bus stop and then uh, there are two other side gates one namely and uh, nearer to the tennis court mm. which then leads you to of course go straight upwards you can have a I think they, they didn't mention also that you know it might be possibly be sheltered mm. to the Lentor MRT station mm. and then of course the next one would be side gate 3 which leads you to Hill Park. Yeah, so I think that in terms of um, based on the site plan itself, I think that uh, there's a huge space that's uh, already you know granted for um, landscaping. So 16 itself, the Grand Lawn, I think we, I think nowadays because of the land prices increasing and all that, I think it's hard to find um, projects with such a huge uh, free, uh, free area that mm. you know you can have picnics, you can have uh, you know walk your pets and then with this kind of um, areas i think it is good for the residents when they you know live here and then they don't feel so uh, claustrophobic mm. i would say mm. so and then of course there is a, a, a new um, um design that you know uh, gokolan added for lentil mansion which is the glamping area which Where is, is it, uh, uh, which is, is, is that? Uh, here is right that, uh, 23 20, 23 right correct. Yeah, 23. so the the glamping yeah. area is going to be and, and and they have some photos it looks on like it. this glamping yeah. style like it's quite it's quite interesting yeah, so nice they have the, the glamping area which yeah. is like a uh, those, for those who, who might not know this, it's actually like a tentage where, you know, uh, people can rent or, you know, uh, it might, it might rent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. In this case, this book. This is the first of its kind right. of facility that you can find in a res- uh, private residential project right. in Singapore. Right. Very, exactly. very interesting kind of concept. So, you know, if you, you are hosting yeah. a, a birthday party, you might be hosting, you know, uh, or if you, for marriage proposal even, you can, uh, you know, uh, have this kind of uh, glamping mm. uh, setting. Uh, setting that you can, can get to enjoy. Yeah. Whether, wh- whether this kind of uh, facility would be a hit Mm. Uh, or miss uh, will remain to be seen but yeah. definitely uh, the idea that the developer had was to of course uh, integrate with of the, the nature that is around because just right behind uh, the boundary over here would then be your Hillock Park yes. yet at the same time uh, they want uh, residents to be able to enjoy the nature over here mm. yet being in the comfort of their own uh, uh, mm. premises la. Right. yeah correct so that, that was the idea as to why the whole camping area mm. was uh, being built and generally if you were to look at this project uh, very interestingly enough of course looking at the huge land, land plot right this is the lowest density project in Lentor mm. uh, mm. Hills so far yeah and if you were to look at top down approach you can see there's lots and lots of landscaping lots mm. of lots of facilities area in fact it's close to about 70 30 uh, ratio of uh, landscaping to the residential units mm. yeah and in particular like what Yong- Yongchun mentioned uh, of course you can see the Grand Lawn area this is something which uh, honestly if mm. you were to look at of course uh, Singapore the number one is lens cars so uh, definitely when you look at condo projects as mm. much as possible developers want to uh, maximize their 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 build up space, right? Uh, but when you look at Lentor mentioned over here, the fact that you have uh, the luxury of having such a huge land plot dedicated to uh, such a grand lawn facility over here, I think this is quite reminiscent or quite reflective of uh, Guoco Land's uh, commitment to be creating this project 
as a different proposition, mm. uh, more geared towards luxury. Uh, this kind of uh, I think grand this launch, is the grand lawn, right? This yes, correct. This is the grand lawn. Right. Right. There's a very grand huge uh, old heritage, the Busu tree in the middle. Uh, of course, Did Gokulan, they mention that they're going to keep it? Yes, going to keep <laughs> it. Gokulan is actually going to... Uh, just like the Lentor Hills, right? Correct, yeah. Just like Lentor okay. They're going to be bringing this in uh, <laughs> uh, upon TOP. So uh, okay. you can expect that. Uh, which is this one? Which yeah. is this tree? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Which is, which is they even draw it in the in the side plan. Yeah. 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 So if I were to do a quick comparison, right, is there something like this kind of like Grand Lawn uh, faci- uh, facility, right, is reminiscent of let's say for example uh, more towards the luxury projects back in uh, close to the city center. Yeah. Mm. So you got like a uh, principal garden. Principal garden mm. has also a very similar kind of concept. They have eighty twenty landscaping to residential units kind right. of uh, 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 ratio over there. Mm. Yeah. So I would say. Uh, you are n- for this project, you are not really uh, buying into, I would say, uh, the nature, but rather the luxury and then uh, the facilities that uh, Gokoland has uh, very tactfully uh, included over here. Mm. Yeah. So if you were to see the whole entire mm. floor plan, you can divide it into three parts, basically. The first part will be at block 64 and 52. That's where you can find your clubhouse, your 50-meter lab pool. And of course, towards the right side where the side gate 2 is, that's where you find your play pool, your play uh, pavilion. Basically, that's where the kids right? area will be. Yeah, right, children's okay. area will be. So uh, generally, uh, that is where lots of uh, recreational stuff that is happening. Mm. Uh, you got a tennis court over there as well. Yeah, And very, interesting enough, uh, very interestingly enough, uh, developers actually put this to the side. Why? Because uh, generally, of course, uh, there's going to be lots of uh, noise, activities there. Right. Yeah, noise. Uh, it's uh, still quite a distance away from even the closest blocks. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And then you can see the middle portion over there. That uh, in the middle right of uh, 62 and 56, you have the leisure pool. Mm. Yeah. So this one is maybe geared more towards uh, the uh, lifestyle kind of theme, the relaxation. I think this is the. Is this the photo? Uh, th- this will be the kids pool. The play pool. Oh, okay. So the yeah. kids pool. Yeah. Right. Also, oh, so this is a leisure pool. Yes, correct. Yeah, this, this is a le- right. leisure pool. So you can see it's more geared towards, uh, I would say, lifestyle kind of living. La. Hanging uh, hammock. Yeah, hanging hammock, <laughs> lazy rivers. Right. Uh, yeah, this kind of uh, concept. Mm. Yeah, And then, of course, the third concept would then be your Grand Long concept. So that mm. is where it's really geared more towards... Uh, ha- Having quality time with your families. This is where you can have picnics, you can have uh, exactly. uh, chill time with your kids, with your family, and, and whatnot. And, and I think yeah. when, when talking about Lentor Mansion, we, we, we cannot miss out the fact that the mansion is just right there, right? Yep. 34, which I think the, the iconic design of the, the mansion, to make it like a clubhouse, which houses essentially, uh, essentially you know, like a, the function room, I think they call it the Lentor room, there's a drawing room, the veranda, yeah. the, and the chamber. Right. Right. So yeah. essentially, this overlooks the lab pool, mm. and I think it makes this entire lab pool plus the, the, the pool deck uh, essentially quite luxurious mm. because of the black and white design, essentially. Yeah. So I think, you know, um, those who, who chooses units that are close to this lab pool would definitely be, be I think it would be a premium, la, I yeah. would say. Yeah. So overall, if you look at this entire project, you can see the whole entire Gokoland DNA right smack on this mm. Lentor Mansion site plan. Yeah. Mm. And I think the other last point we're going to talk about on this site plan before we head off to the next mm. segment is that actually if you realise the entrance is right here along Lentor Gardens Road. Yep. So do take note that this Lentor Gardens Road is actually not the main road. It's basically a new road that's being mm. carved out right. um, to uh, basically uh, supply traffic or manage the traffic in the area. So this is the main entrance and go once you go in um, because of the childcare centre right here in 58 um, there's a drop off right here for the childcare centre. Yep. So technically speaking, for people who enroll their kids into the childcare centre, you don't really have to go into the development. Uh, although you enter this from the same point, but for residents, you do a right turn, go through the guard room right here, right down this road, and then you do a left turn, you go into the un- basement car park. So th- actually, this is not to the basement car park, yep. you know, contrary to how it looks like on a side plan, uh, but the co- basement car park actually goes in right in the middle right here. So this left turn will actually go to the genset area. Mm. I believe this is the genset area. Yes. Yes. Uh, and then this is the childcare center. So in a way, um, you don't really get a lot of obstruction of traffic uh, um, other than entering into this main development right here. And do a right turn. This is basically to the residence area. La. So this is the main drop off. So it's very exclusive. It's very... Uh, you don't really share the same drop-off uh, with the families that's dropping off the kids uh, yep. to the childcare centre. Correct. Mm. So this is also the other elevation chart. So you can clearly see that this elevation chart shows the six different blocks. You have your block 60, 62, 64, uh, which is the high-rise blocks uh, of um, up to 16 levels. You do mm. get a sky terrace in the middle at level, level 9. nine. Uh, which is uh, why they do it at level 9 is because when you're standing in the sky terrace, you will clear the roof line mm. um, of your lower blocks mm. of um, 58. 56 and 52. And do take note that B1, although um, there's two basement level of car park, but B1 in this sense 
uh, is actually a street level. Correct. It's so your, when it's you drive in, that is actually B1. considered B1. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Correct. So your level one is actually elevated, so to speak. La. So in a way, you can clearly say that maybe the, B, the level one is actually on your level two or level three of a yeah. normal kind of like block settings. Mm. Yeah. Another thing to note is also uh, 58, 52, 64, 62, and 60 have eight stacks in total, yeah. which left 56 with only six stacks. Mm. So that's one, one, one point to, to add on also. 56, I think, is also the one that is the facing towards the, the main, or I'll say the bus stop. Yeah, the bus correct, stop. Correct. Yeah. Right beside the, land, uh, the, 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 the mansion yeah. clubhouse. So with that, you know, let's go right into the units distribution chart that we have. So clearly, we do have a mixture of two beders all the way to the five beders. You don't really get one beta one right beta, here. Correct. So one beta is, is not in this uh, project. Uh, the smallest unit would actually be the two bit one buff. Two bit one buff, exactly. Uh, which right here, uh, <laughs> Yongjun has done this uh, split. So maybe Yongjun, you want to share if Correct. So, uh, okay, so the smallest beta size would be the two beta, two bit one buff, which mm. is the two bedroom basic. And then, of course, two bit two buff would be two bedroom standard. It goes all the way to the five betas. And, of course, Lentor mentioned is the first project in this Lentor uh, hue, uh, hue area, which has the, the, f the five beta. La. So, I think that, you know, you your there's a huge percentage of two betas being allocated because there's also no one beta. So, 40.2% of um, Lantern Mansion is allocated for, for the two betas. Mm. So I think essentially for those who are looking to invest, also uh, I think this would naturally be you know uh, what Guacolang is also trying to do that okay, the two betas would be you know, allocated for people who want to invest. Or of, mm. of course the, the being a dumbbell uh, layout, uh, yes, uh, we will show you the, the, the layout later on. The dumbbell layouts I think is essentially what actually a lot of buyers are looking at uh, both for own stay and for rental. Mm. And right. then if you move up the, the layout size, three bedroom they have the three bedroom basic and then you have the three bedroom plus flex and then there's the flex plus the household shelter which of course we'll show you the layout plans later this would equate to around 37.3 percent of the entire plot mm. so i think the two beders and the three beders are the one that is the majority mm. yeah. and uh, the four beders and the five beders would be uh, th therefore be the correct it really uh, adds up mm. to be yeah. about close to 80 percent correct. correct so if you look at uh, just purely the percentage of uh, the unit mix over here you can see that Two beaters make up 40%, mm. and the remaining would then be three beaters and above. Mm. So clearly, you can definitely tell that the proposition or the angle that uh, deve the developer has gone in here would be geared more towards owner stay, yeah. family stay. Right. Yeah. And but right. one thing to note, if you are very savvy and you have been following a lot of the real estate, mm. you do know that I think in recent um, years, uh, if you talk about unit size, three beaters usually is in the range of about 900 odd square feet, yep. closer to 1,000 square feet. 1,000, 1,001 will just mm. largely be your three beders plus utility or WC. Uh, two beders will be like maybe 800 plus square feet and stuff like that. But you do know that right now, if you look at the size right here, you realize that the size, eh, how come it's like a smaller size, right? Three mm. beders starts at 700 plus square feet, which usually will start in about 800 plus to 900 plus square feet. Mm. This is also because of the entire harmonization yep. ruling by URA. Uh, which they have already taken away the size of the yeah, aircon latched, mm. uh, which is right now it's not, it's not computed into the whole entire strata space that is being sold to the consumer. Uh, we will also go into the details later on to look at the size, whether with this harmonization, does it really, you know, uh, Affect. make affects yeah. the whole entire mm. livable space um, or, you know, is there any kind of like, impact to the whole entire livable, uh, livable space? Mm. Yeah. And if you look at the uh, our, our, okay, so if you look at the two beders, right, being 40% of the entire um, Lentor mansion, I think Guacolan is smart enough to place them in every part of the project. They <laughs> okay. didn't really, you know, um, locate all of them in certain blocks or mm. certain uh, certain parts of the project. They placed it even in, I would say, you know, on the level 16 blocks. You know, sometimes we we, we, we kind of foresee that usually higher floors, uh, th the towers with the higher floors or the better facing usually are allocated mm. to larger layout types, right? Mm. So I think they, they did a smart move by trying to uh, put them, uh, space basically space them out. Evenly la. spread out. Yeah, yeah evenly spread out. You see, at every Correct. different facing, you you get to find the two beta stack. Mm. Yeah. Both the two beta, uh, the two bed one buff and the yeah. two bed two buff. Yeah, yeah you get yeah, one that's everywhere. facing the, the lazy the pool. pool. You get yeah, one pool. that's facing the lab pool, which yeah. generally usually is being reserved for the more premium units. Correct. But you get to see them right here. So like 527 square feet, which is like the two bed one buff. Yeah. Mm. You get them facing the swimming pool as well. Mm. You get them facing the, the, this is basically facing towards Lentor Hill. Yeah, Hills, yeah. uh, but right here, this unit will actually uh, be facing towards Hillock Green. Yeah, uh, you Hillock get, Park, a, you right? get mm. quite a good view of Hillock Park. Mm. Yeah. 
So this is a three betas. Likewise, it's uh, also very well spread as well. Mm. Mm. So I think it's quite widespread out. And then, of course, we have the, 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 the smaller size starting from um, 7x6 mm. and then the flex and then plus the flex plus household. Lah. So mm. essentially, the two and three betas, are, I think, are quite evenly spread out. So mm. I think those who are looking towards uh, Lantor Mansion, you don't have to worry that, you know, if you, assuming that you are, you are going to buy for your own stay, you're looking for a three beta, you don't have to worry that, oh, will I be competing with the four betas and the five betas in terms of view? Right. I think that mm -hmm. you, 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 you get a fair chance. Of course, depending on your, your ballot number, mm -hmm. if you get a good ballot number, of course, you can have the choice to choose uh, in terms of the view that you like. La. Most of mm. the units are all facing towards uh, the north-south, uh, largely facing yeah, towards the north-south orientation uh, because it's mm. being uh, inclined in a certain way. Mm. Uh, maybe certain units will be like north-east, south-west, mm. but largely you don't really get um, those very direct west-sun. Yeah. Perhaps those units that is right here, this one, uh, if you were to follow my pointer, these units, these units, uh, these units, and probably this unit right here will probably get certain level of west sun coming in in certain part of the years. Mm. Angular. Uh, mm. Yeah, angular. La. So you just hit at an angle into the units, but it's not direct, direct. Yeah. So I think that's a, a very good orientation. And it is also because they, they want to make sure that it basically captures a lot of the kind of like wind flow that's going through the whole entire hillock park. Mm. So coming to the larger units, the four and the five beders, I think they are now more positioned so towards yes, the correct. high blocks. Yeah, yeah, correct. So also, one thing to note is that the site plan, right, um, you can't tell it, but actually Lentor Mansion is actually uh, is, is going upwards towards Hillock Park. So there's, ah. a, there's, a, there's a form of elevation. Right. So I think for the four and five bathers, they want to make it nearer to the top. Mm. So I think they, they place most of the, you know, the five bathers in block uh, Tower 60 and Tower 62, mm. which is overlooking uh, <coughs> into Hillock Park, uh, Hillock Park mm. and, uh, of course, um, Little Hill residences. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, if you look at the larger uh, uh, layouts over here, your four bidders, your five bidders, generally you can only find them at the three high-rise high towers, mm. which is uh, 60, 62, and 64. Mm. So, generally, these three different, uh, these three towers have, uh, I would say, in terms of the facing, it's uh, uh, much more, I would say, more premium as yeah. compared to the three low-rise in front. Why? Because uh, you are further away from the... Uh, so called uh, road. Yeah, the road. The even, though, road yeah, even though Lentor Gardens is not a main road, mm. uh, but you're still uh, further away, uh, you get uh, quite, if you are those internal facing, you get quite a very nice internal facing kind of uh, uh, view facing either towards a pool or the Grand Lawn. Yeah. yeah you otherwise, pool, yeah. Lazy correct. pool, Grand Lawn, Hillock Park. Yeah. Otherwise, you see for those that are facing external, uh, that is facing north, mm. you can see that generally they still do get some view of the Hillock Park. Mm. So you can see that Stack 39 would be, I would say, the furthest in if you have to look at the external part. I mean, generally right in front of uh, Stack one? 39, yeah, generally right in front would be uh, your Lentor Hills. Oh, but okay, I would say you right. still get some pocket view of uh, at least the Green Finger as well as Hillock Park. But yeah, do take note, mm. there's a Green Finger between yeah. your Lentor Mansion mm. and your Hillock, uh, and your Lentor Hills residences because yeah of the way that is being structured actually this part this area immediately your parameter will not be your Lentor Hills residences yes, mm. there's correct. still a green buffer zone yes. uh, whereas I think the distance is about it's about 43, 43 meters, meters odd, la, la, around there from very, parameter to parameter yeah, very good uh, mm. buffer distance away from yeah. the next project la. I mean mm. uh, so, so, so that is a great thing as well if you look at the other uh, the other five the two five beaters at stack 26 and 34 mm. I would say they get a very very good view stack 23 will also get uh, in fact it's a corner unit uh, right towards the tail end on, of the entire project and you get a very very nice view of Hillock Park mm. yeah. mm. alright so now let's take a look at this uh, this whole entire harmonization we mm. want to quickly run through uh, what is this all about la. so this harmonization that what uh, URA has done is actually they, they you know in a way they want to make sure that the whole entire way of calculating the in internal space is being unified across mm. all the different agencies. But I think largely to consumers wise, um, the main difference would actually be that your AC latch will right now be not counted within your strata space. Mm. Yeah. Right? So AC latch will not be calculated in. Uh, you don't get any voice as well. So in the in the event if you're buying the top floor unit, which is like 16th level, 16th floor unit, you don't get the kind of like double volume ceiling height mm. right. where the developer will sell you the void space. Right. So I think this is the whole entire harmonization, which then means that if you look at the num the size, um, it is smaller in terms of numbers. Uh, we have done a little bit of a comparison by pulling out the floor plans of a three beta, just for example, sake um, of Lentor Mansion, Lentor Hills Residences, and also the most recent Lentoria. So these are all the smallest um, size three beders in its yeah. respective projects. Yeah. Lentoria three beta is at 915 square feet, uh, Lentor Hills 958, 
Whereas for Lentor Mansion, it's looking at 786. So by of course, by number wise, definitely Lentor Mansion has a very big difference um, right. with their two other projects. But if you look at the internal space, uh, Lentor Mansion's smallest entry level unit for three beta is um, having a dumbbell kind of layout, mm. right. which means that they have actually saved quite a fair bit of space in terms of the foyer space. The but if you look mm. at the bedroom size, I would say that they don't really, you know, have much of a difference yes. um, across the various two other projects even comparing to Lentoria uh, mm. the bedroom size is pretty much similar bathroom size is also similar as well balcony size I would say that they are also pretty much um, the same as well living room size as well probably the only difference that you may want to point out that you may see is also uh, probably in the kitchen space mm, so you clearly you can see that um, the, the later developers uh, the later developments are, are adopting a kind of like an open kitchen kind of concept yeah. mm. for the three bathers I think it's mainly towards the kind of like change in lifestyle of the modern family where probably they are eating out more often they don't really cook often okay. uh, then the developers will want to save more space uh, in the usable area like the, the living area yeah. Uh, then they compromise a little bit in the kitchen space. Yeah, yeah. yeah correct. Mm. Yeah, I, I think another thing to take note is that uh, if you see Lentoria, very interestingly, uh, I, th I think this is also uh, in uh, reflection of the harmonization rule, mm. which is also uh, all void space will not be included in the strata area. Mm. So technically, if you see uh, at the... Oops. Yep, no problem. Back. So technically, yeah. if you if you were to go to see the Lentoria floor plan over there, you mm. can see the dotted lines above the bedrooms and the living areas. Yeah, this one generally uh will be pertaining to the top floor yeah, units lah. But Lentoria, the unique mm. point about the top floor units is that they give you the extra volume ceiling correct. height, but they don't build you. Yeah, correct. yeah. Okay. So they don't so they don't put it into a strata space. Yeah. But that's one of their selling point for correct. for Lentoria, yeah. which is the lower floor unit and the upper level unit. You get a five meters high ceiling mm. height. Mm. Yeah, right. yeah. But generally, right now, if you see uh, Lentor mentioned the top floor units, it's basically yeah. the same lah. No more, no more strata, no, more, no more double volume. volume because it does not make sense for yeah. you to uh, develop to do that. Correct. So that's also reflective of the harmonization mm. rule. We did a little bit of comparisons for the various type of floor plans. Uh, mm. So clearly over here, we did um, you know compare between the two beders, three beders. Um, so maybe Yongjun, you want to share? Yeah, correct. So I, I think one one thing that when I first saw the um, the two beders, uh, the, the, the most striking part, of course, is the dumbbell layout. And mm. I think because of the harmonization uh, ruling that, because Lentor mentioned is the first, uh, I think some people have been asking, you know, uh, whether, you know, the, if the AC ledgers are no longer going to be, uh, you know, uh, maintained by the owners themselves, mm. would then the AC ledge be uh, part of the, what the MCSC is going to control? Mm. And would the AC ledgers then be combined? Mm. So that's one, uh, uh, one thing that actually people are thinking about. So when you when I look at the floor plans, actually the AC ledge is still um, part of you know uh, the, the the unit itself. It's just that it's no longer uh, part of the strata yeah, space. It's not completed in that space. La. Correct. So I think having to find you know a two bader dumbbell layout is uh, it, it itself is already quite rare. So uh, because they also wanted to lower in terms of the because of the harmonization rule, they are no longer uh, Google line is not not uh, be able to uh, build in terms of the AC ledge. So uh, if they are if their uh, idea, you know, is to is to control in terms of perhaps the quantum pricing, uh, they might look into building smaller uh, units. But uh, with smaller units, they know that okay, I have to make it as efficient as possible, mm, yeah. which is w also the reason why they came up with the dumbbell yes, layout. Yes, correct. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So as you can see, the dumbbell layout, even for the two bed one bath or the two bed two bath, mm. uh, is very very efficient use and very functional use of the space. Mm. And uh, uh, of course, with the harmonization rule, they are not able to build the AC latch anymore. Uh, uh, this is one way in which developer can also. Uh, 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 stand to actually, uh, I would say, creatively design the new two beta layouts mm. in such a way where uh, they are able, still able to to make some form of uh, break even or uh, even uh, some profits uh, yeah. over mm. here. Mm. So this so is basically the orientation of where all the two yeah. betas are. Uh. Correct. Right. Yeah. So if you look, uh, generally the two bed, uh, one bath you can find in uh, quite most of the blocks, mm. except for block uh, sixty. Yeah, and if you to look at the two bed two bath, you also get quite a good facings lah. Mm. So I would say if you to look at over here, uh, generally I would say the more premium two bed two bath stacks would then be located at uh, block sixty. Mm. Yeah, mm. because it's at stack twenty five, yeah, you get uh, yeah. quite a very good, nice unblocked northern view mm. uh, towards Hillock Park. Uh, even at stack twenty nine, even though it's internal facing, very very good distance away from the adjacent block, which mm. is block fifty eight. Oh, green uh, lawn. yeah, technically you are facing towards the green lawn, mm. and also if you are taking the units which are above 9th floor. 
mm. right? With your, your, your 10 to 16 Correct. floors, mm. you do get an unblocked view because uh, the block in front of you is only up to eight stories high. And yep. then on top of that, in front, which is uh, in front of the blocks over there is generally your low-rise mm. uh, developments, your your land, your landed estates, your, mm. your and, and whatnot. So yep. quite a good northern and southern view mm. uh, uh, at these uh, stacks over here. Definitely mm. do expect a premium like, in terms of Correct. the unit price yeah. uh, as compared to the rest of the other stacks. For example, mm. those that maybe this one, um, stack 13 that's facing towards the bus stop, for example, yeah. or these stacks right here that is actually facing towards the junction of the roads. Yeah, mm. correct. Yeah. Next one that we want to compare will actually be a tree bader. So a couple of layouts. In fact, I would say that there's a lot of variations for yes, tree baders. Correct. So if you look at the tree baders, mainly three different main variations. You got a tree bedroom, you got a tree bedroom flex, and then right. you got a tree bedroom uh, flex plus home shelter. Right. Of course, uh, this uh, caters to different needs mm. of uh, buyers these days. Yep. So if you look at the tree bedroom, uh, this is a smaller uh, kind one. Of unit. Yeah, this C1 is a smaller C2. one. Yeah, yeah. Mm. tree bed, two bath. Very, uh, we say functional, very mm. efficient uh, use of the space and the layout over here. Mm. Uh, two different types of layout you see. Interestingly, uh, C1 will be more towards the dumbbell kind of layout. Mm. C2 would then be your linear kind of layout. Mm. Yeah. So uh, clearly, as you can see, uh, the different layout also have different kinds of uh, uh, characteristics. So most important, uh, one of the more obvious one would then be your common bathroom. Mm. So if you look at a dumbbell layout, your common bathroom is lacking of a ventilation window. In fact, not only in the common one. Yeah. Master yeah, in as fact, well. the master mm. as well. Yeah, yeah, correct. So this is something that's very rare for a tree bader because usually yeah. the tree baders will be the one that you do get a ventilation Should window mean, in a yeah. master bedroom. At least la, master mm. bedroom, yeah, right? Correct. Yeah, correct. But because of the positioning of C1, later on, if you look at the stacks right here, yeah. C1 will be the one that is actually in the middle, um, will be the one that's middle, right? So yeah, C1 will be this one. Yeah, yes. So because they are located in the middle of the blocks and, and because of the way that the units is being lined up, uh, there's no way for you to have a ventilation, ventilation window, window right? inside. Yes, so that's the reason why it yeah. does not come with it, but I believe that you will definitely come with a ventilator. La. Yes, of mm. course, mechanical ventilation will be mm. installed. Yeah, yeah, but if you look at C2, both bathrooms, uh, you do get windows. Yeah. So, this is so, so that is great. I think another thing to take note of also, it, when it comes to your ventilation, would then be in, in your kitchen. Mm. Yeah, so you see for yeah. the kitchen for C1, right? Uh, uh, no, no, no windows no as well. No yeah, it's, mm. a, it's a more, I would say, functional kind of uh, yeah. kitchen over mm. here. If you were to look at C2, you do get quite a, a good dedicated kitchen space, L-shaped mm. countertop, a slightly longer one. Uh, you get the, your, your casement windows there as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the next one would actually be the units that comes with a flex mm. room. Mm. Yeah, so I think this, is, this kind of layout is also pretty, I would say, uh, common nowadays where yeah. developers... Uh, comes out with a, a space that allows you to have a flexibility in how you want to use it, whether mm. you want to enclose it to become a storage space, you want to turn it into a study, or yep. you want to use it as a helper's room. It basically gives you the options. La. Yeah, correct. And I think the flex room, why they name it flex instead of a study is mm. because uh, if you go down to the show flat, right, actually the flex room actually is slightly bigger than the most of the studies that we actually see nowadays. Mm. Because usually for study a uh, study room uh, in a new project, usually what they'll do is that they'll put a table and then they'll, they'll, they'll mock up it with a table and a seat and, and that's pretty much yeah. it. La. So for the flex room, what we've seen is that actually you can actually put in a bed, which is I think quite unique. Was that shown in the show flat? Uh, uh, the, the show flat uh, was ID treatment. Uh, yeah, right. right. Of, uh, so I, think I do some have that's to be C1, yeah. right? Yes. Uh, no, 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 no. That's like C3. Yeah. But this is basically a rendering of the show correct. flat. Yeah. So yeah. C3 will also be the flex kind of layout. Mm. Yeah. So if you hit into the flex room, actually, mm. it is quite a sizable uh, uh, right. space over there. And I think the unique thing is that you mm. have two different entrances. Mm. So one is from the kitchen side. This from one, the kitchen. Yeah, mm. one is from the walkway side. Yeah. yeah. So uh, walkway. What will be provided for you uh, at the point of a key collection would, would be a sliding door on the kitchen side. Yeah, yeah, but okay. you can, of course, always install a door that is uh, on the walkway side. Like mm. If you mm. want to convert this into uh, sort of like a room, Right. Yeah. Otherwise, this space, right, as the name suggests, is very, very flexible. Uh, okay. I, I even have some uh, 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 clients before who uh, have bought uh, similar kind of layouts. For this space over here, they divide the space into two. So uh, one side of it, which is facing towards the kitchen, would then be your storage area for your okay. dry food, your dry goods. And then the other side would then be perhaps your walk-in wardrobe or your, your showcase or your storage area for your bulky items. Mm. So I would say this, this space over here uh, provides a very good option, especially if you are a larger family, mm. slightly larger family. Uh, uh, because if you can see over here, in terms of a three-bedroom flex, you are lacking a home shelter. Mm. And home shelter is also generally where uh, you would store 
your uh, bulky items, your 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 storage and whatnot. Which yeah. actually brings me to the next one. Uh. Mm. So this is the one that comes with the home shelter yes, and a flex room. Yes, correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is basically the bigger type. And this one also comes with a tree buff. So from what we understand from the developer, Gokoland, they shared with us that you know the way that they position this layout, and you will see this in three bedroom, three buff, uh, three bedroom flex plus home shelter kind of mm. unit uh, layout, four bedrooms and the five bedrooms is that there is a bathroom that is located very close towards right. the entrance mm, yes. of the unit and what they share with us is that usually when they do that um, this is because um, you know to catering to you know, maybe for example family with um, pets you know when they bring the pets home or mm. if they are you know out and when they come back home they want to use the bathroom to clean up themselves clean up the pets before they enter into the unit this is actually located in a very strategic position of the whole entire Correct. space yeah it's a, it's a very practical location of the bathroom yeah. la, I would mm, say which correct. is just right beside your entry area uh, mm. uh, is, is, is a great placement. Yeah. Mm. So this so three-bed, three-bath mm. uh, three three configuration also comes with um, a dry and wet kitchen concept. Yep. Mm. Yep. Okay, so if you were to look, uh, especially uh, if at the entrance foyer area, mm. you do realize that there are some variations uh, when you look at these three different layouts. Mm. Yeah. So for the uh, type C6, uh, you have a quite a more shorter entrance foyer area. The moment you enter, uh, you turn left, that is where you, you enter into your dry kitchen mm. area. Uh, for the C7, you have a slightly longer space uh, mm. before you reach the dry kitchen area. This mm. is great in terms of, let's say, for example, you want to do up some cabinetry or spaces. Shoe racks, or, or shoe or racks. Yeah. Or you want to put some of your bicycles mm. or, or, or basically uh, your items. You have lots of space to do that. Mm. Yeah. Is Stack C8 would then be more in terms of a private walkway, uh, mm. entrance foyer into the area, uh, slightly more private kind of a uh, feel. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and if you were to look as another thing I want to point out would be your flex area so you can see the flex area over here is slightly different from your previous uh, three bedroom plus which flex which is located layout. at the kitchen space la. correct it's located at the kitchen space uh, that's one thing another thing is that if you were to look at the windows the uh, if you see the green uh, uh, rectangular yep. uh, over there the windows is actually quite uh, wall to wall mm. kind. Mm. so you get very large windows uh, lots of uh, natural ventil light ventilation that's going to come in into the flex area as well uh, so this is perfect if for example you want to turn this into a study uh, or yep. work uh, office area yep. or even for example let's say your, your kids have pian uh, they, they, they play the piano, piano. this is where you can put your mm. uh, your your musical items here as well. Right. Mm. So in terms of the kind of layout locations of the units, uh, mm. the stack flex with home shelter, which is more of the more premium ones, would actually um, be right here in 18 and in 1. Yeah. So clearly, most of the units of the three bedroom uh, with the flex and home shelter, they are all facing mainly the, the inner facing. Mm. There's only two units that's actually facing towards the main, I would say the Lentor Gardens Road, la, yeah. which is 22 and 12. So largely based on the kind of like um, you know, the way that the developers will price the units, largely we believe 12 and 22 will be the more, um, uh, I would say, economical ones. Correct. Mm. Yeah, right. correct. That brings us to the next um, variation, which is the four bader. Mm. So four baders and five baders will be the one that comes with a walk-in wardrobe kind of concept yep. in a master bedroom. So you do definitely get a more luxurious kind of like master bedroom. In fact, by the floor plan itself, you also have area that is being depicted as a dressing area. Mm. You get a dry and a wet kitchen concept home shelter right in, shorter foyer area. In fact, I think this one is also a dedicated foyer space, right? Mm. D1 would actually be more, um, I would say, if you, if you want to do a, a custom kind of design, yeah, correct. it, gives, more you like a more, it mm. gives you more space for you to do quite a fair bit of yep. like carpentry work. Yeah. I, I think one, one thing to take note for the four bedder layout is uh, the placement of the second bathroom. So the placement of the second bathroom is uh, in the center of the whole entire floor plate, uh, right above the household shelter. I think one thing to take note is that uh, for this bathroom over here, it's mechanical ventilation. For sure. Yeah, mm. unfortunately, there, there's no uh, uh, placement of the windows. Mm. Yeah. But if you were to compare with the three bedder flex plus home shelter, mm. you can see that the second bathroom actually do get uh, your window. window. Yeah, mm. correct. So uh, I I would say that uh, if let's say for example uh, the four bedder versus the three bedder plus household flex plus household shelter, it is quite uh, a good uh, alternative lah. Let's say if you're if you're looking, if you don't really need a yeah, fourth, if you don't really need room, like, quite a, a large uh, fourth room lah. Mm. Yeah, I would say. And, and the second bathroom in the in the four bedders, uh, they're Jack and Jill. Essentially, they they mainly want to make it in the middle of the mm. entire house, right? Mm. So, yeah. from your living and dining, from from entrance way all the way to your master bedroom, you are probably like equidistant. So basically, 
everyone has access to the to the to the yeah. common bath uh, easily. Yeah. yeah. But definitely where the space for the four bedder uh, uh, is in terms of the lu- uh, luxury would then be in terms of your balcony. Mm. So your balcony stretches all along bedroom four. But mm. take note for the bedroom four, right? Uh, the win- is windows, is casement windows, mm. it is not sliding doors. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, it's slightly different from the five bedder later where we touch yeah. on it. Yeah. Mm. And another place where there's also a bit more luxury and space would then be in your master bedroom. Mm. So your master bedroom is really, really quite big. Mm. You get a, a very sizable walk-in wardrobe. You got dual counter, uh, dual wardrobe Cabinet, spaces, yeah. yeah, mm. cabinet spaces on both sides. Mm. You even got enough space to put a vanity dual desk sink. or a study desk, whichever you you wish to lah. And the master bath is also quite luxurious. You got his and her sink as well. One yeah. thing to note, right, the bath tree that you sh- see in this floor plan right here, mm. this is not like a WC, right? So this yeah, is a full correct. functional bathroom, yes. right? Just to let you know, because we have seen a show flat, uh, this is a full functional bathroom. Yeah, you bathroom. got a shower facility there, so. Yes, yeah. right. So the, uh, in terms of the placement-wise, I think you, we, we all know that the placement will definitely be the more premium. Yeah. is in the high-rise blocks, either that's inner facing or the Hillock Park facing. Mm. Um, this will be very unique uh, to the whole entire Lantau area, the five bathers. Uh, yeah. This will be, uh, this is the only, there's two, right? E1 and E2. Yes, E1 right? and E2. Correct. Yeah. So basically not much, not much uh, difference, difference like. except for the, the entrance foyer area. Mm. La. Yeah. So the entrance foyer area, okay. So uh, the entrance foyer area, you can see you get a very long walkway in. Yeah, yeah uh, a lot of people feel some people some some people might feel that uh this is not a good utilization of the space mm. of the five bidder over here. Mm. But uh generally if you look at it this way, uh the five bidders here don't really have a private uh, lift lobby mm. area. Mm. And generally the private lift lobby area would uh, no lift lobby area would then mean uh you are able to utilize the space even more. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So uh this part, this walkway over here, you can do up some cabinetry spaces as well. Uh, you say you have a very good uh, sort of a wall to build up along. And then, of course, you got your fourth bathroom, which is stuck very nicely just right behind the entrance yeah. over there. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and your household shelter is also quite uh, strategically placed very near towards the entrance. So, say for example, your bulky items, you don't have to lug it uh, all throughout the home. Mm. Yeah, because uh, if you look at the other layouts, the household shelter is generally in the centre. Yeah, yeah. Like this is in the centre. Yeah, you got to go yeah, through the correct. kitchen and stuff. Yeah. Uh. Of course, foyer areas. I think um, it is up to really individual. How mm. how how well do you want to use the foyer? Correct. Most people might use it for cabinetry, for for your go-to items right before you leave home. But because it's slightly longer, you can even put more things mm. there. Mm. You know, if your household shelter has insufficient space, you can also you know add on to to using the foyer area as well. Yeah. Yep. And if you look at the wet kitchen, uh, you get quite a fully enclosable wet, uh, wet kitchen area over here, plus your yard. yard. Yeah, mm, correct. correct. So this is something which is only exclusive to the five bidders over but here. One thing mm. I want to bring to the audience's uh, attention mm. is that the bedroom number five, which is right here. So if you were to go mm. to the show flat uh, and you were to view the units, you realize that in the show flat, they actually take down the wall for here, yep. creating a what we call a landscape kind of layout. Yep. So if you still recall at the earlier start of this whole entire... Um, review series, we mentioned that Lentor mentioned is actually using the PPVC method. So mm. PPVC, you know, in a very layman term, I'll just call it a Lego method. Mm. So they build everything, they stack it up. So it basically decreases the construction time. Uh, it makes it faster as well. But the downside to that is that you can't take down any kind of walls. Yep. So you can clearly see that all the walls right here, they're all depicted in dark grey. These are all uh, walls that you cannot remove the way. So if you, let's say you want to combine fourth bedroom and master bedroom, I'm sorry, you can't do that. Mm. But if you want to combine fifth bedroom to the living hall to create a wide angle layout, as what you see in the show flat, it is doable. So this is the only wall in the whole entire, I would say, the, the, the floor in the mm. unit that you can actually take down yes. to create a much bigger living hall space. Yeah. Yeah. And but of course, in this five bedroom, you get a junior master, a master bedroom layout concept. Mm. The other five bedroom, as you can see right here, this is will be the one that is more like a Z-shaped kind of like yeah. entrance. Um, this is 100% very private. When you open the door, you technically can't see anybody uh, in the main living space. Um, but of course, it gets a little bit, I would say, um, claustrophobic. I would say claustrophobic, yeah. but mm. narrow la, in a sense yeah. where mm. when you walked in, you know, it's basically more like a portrait kind of like feel if you do not want to take down the wall. Correct. But otherwise, in the whole entire space, it's pretty much the same as what you've seen earlier on in E1, yeah. uh, mm. which is... Yeah, but I would say even though the living and dining is more towards like a more portrait, portrait kind of uh, yeah. uh, layout, right? Mm. The living and dining is actually very, very huge. Yeah. yeah. So if you see the dining area, you can fit in easily fit in an eight. You want to think on the ID uh, yeah. the, the, the they, they did, yeah, they did, they did uh, a very long space, yeah, right? a very right. long uh we say grand table. Yeah, even after putting the table, I don't think you feel that uh it's too narrow in terms mm. of walkway. So mm. I think they they made it sufficient like that, despite it being a uh, portrait light, which I think is a is a plus point. Mm. Yeah, correct. Mm. I think another thing to take note of is, is also uh, mm. the overall uh, 
thought that's being put into the five bidders, mm. really, really, uh, I would say the developer really uh, positioned it in a way to be very, very comfortable for a large family staying in here. Mm. Why is that so? Because you got your junior master tucked in on one side, right. dumbbell layout with the attached uh, junior master buff. Mm. Uh, uh, and then after that, on the other side is where your four other bedrooms are. One of the bedrooms, which is bedroom number three, also have like a mock on suite kind of feel. Mm. I mean, you say you also get access to the common uh, Jack bathroom Jill. number three, correct? Mm. Jack and Jill. So in a sense, uh, uh, lots of uh, I would say uh, thought is being put out uh, into the five meters, especially mm. over here. Yeah. Yep. So in terms of the units placement, likewise again, five bedders, definitely very premium. Yep. Uh, you get either two two stacks that's facing towards the Hillock Park view and then you have another one that's facing towards the central lawn. So in mm. a way, you can clearly see that this is basically more of the premium facing. So mm. if let's say you want to go for the smaller units, you go for 20, stack 23, 24, 25, you basically get the same kind of view as the premium uh, five bedders right there. Yep. So now let's come to the more interesting part about the whole entire review, which is more of like a pricing. Although um, this has been more like a announced as a preview at the time of recording, it is mm. still in the preview stage. Um, we do not know the exact pricing yet because it has not gone launched officially. But mm. based on the price matrix, we know that the break-even price, we have talked about that. And you're factoring in the 10% profit margin, the 15% profit margin. You're looking at a price average PSF of about 2066. Correct. Um, announced price was of average about 2085, right? 208, yeah, they're yeah, about 208. So this is basically what they have shared in terms of the starting from pricing like for 2 bit, 3 bit, 4 bit, and 5 bit right there. Ideally, I think they, they, they wanted to make it, um, I, I think we mentioned earlier also, they, because of the harmonization room, but mm. yet they still don't want this to affect, you know, buyer sentiments in terms of the Lentor area. Mm. It being, you know, if they are not going to charge the AC latch, mm. will they be then, you know, increase, if they want still to make the amount of uh, profit, would they then be pricing that into the PSF and therefore, like for like, apple to apple, mm. same size of two beta versus other two betas, would then the quantum be higher? So I think they, they made a smart move trying to, you know, try to control in terms of the quantum that they're releasing, which right. is why now the two beta we are looking at starting at 1.149. Which is a very attractive quantum if yes. you look at it because uh, judging um, from Lentorial, for example, Lentorial, mm. they don't have a two bay one bar. Mm. I think it's two bay two bar. Mm. Uh, starting price will definitely be uh, much more higher than this. So if you're mm. an investor looking into the Lentor area, you want to go into an into a investment mode, then gen largely you can go for a two bay one bar at 1.149. In fact, we did this table up um, just to show a variation of the different kind of price matrix, right? From 2082, which is uh, what they call the average PSF, all the way, I don't think it will hit 2.4, mm. but largely around this range, uh, we have also done in terms of the different kind of like pricing PSF, mm. two bedroom, three bedroom, three bed reflex, home shelter, four bed, as well as also five bed. This is the different kind of like price permutation that you can expect. So, of course, when you look at the Two bay one buff, as what they mentioned, it's still gonna start for 1.14, mm. which means that it's gonna be in a 2180 PSF range right here. Mm. So we being the smallest unit starting right here, you can probably do an estimation that you will go like this. So maybe the the more expensive unit will probably be starting about 2001 yeah, there about correct, like PSF. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just for your reference. Uh, you know, if you want to find out more on this pricing wise, you can always reach out to our consultants. Mm. We are happy to go through the numbers with you. Uh, this will also be what we want to showcase in terms of that current in Lentor versus what is coming up. Of course, uh, Lentoria is already launched and announced. We are knowing mm. the pricing is around the 2002 um, kind of range. We know that our Lentor mention is going to be around 2082. Mm. Um, starting from pricing, we do have a fair bit of um, variation yep. uh, in terms of the pricing wise. Uh. So you can clearly see that despite the fact that uh, it being a harmonization, being ruled by the harmonization, yep. um, mm smaller size but you know the way that they keep the pricing wise if you look at just pricing by quantum perspective um for a lower price four bedroom 2.5 mil maybe you look at about 2.6 mil i'll say that this is still the average pricing that yes. you can get uh, going to lentor area yep. so in fact right. looking at the last chart right here you can see that um lentor hills residences right now four bedroom is going at 2.6 mil mm. um if i look at my graph uh, that we did right here, the average price was sold about 2.6 mil. Yeah. Right. So despite the fact that having um, a smaller size, but in terms of the livable, livable space, there's not much difference. Uh, you mm. get, it basically goes in at the same kind of like quantum, Correct. right? As what are the current options that's available right now in Lentor area. Correct. So I, I think just, just to sum up, even though this is the first project that is launched under the harmonization rule, a lot mm. of buyers are also quite concerned 
how this will affect the overall pricing. Mm. Uh, I think in terms of, if you look uh, at the larger picture, in terms of the entry quantum mm. into the projects over here, generally, I would say there's not much uh, uh, disparity. Mm. Yeah. Uh, because if you look, yeah, four, four bidders, you can see Atlanta Hills as well as Latoria is already touching the 2.6 uh, million range. Yeah. Uh, Atlanta mentioned, if let's say assuming at about 214 or 2150 PSF, mm. it's still really within uh, that range. La. So I would say it's quite comparable as well. Mm. And, and, and mm. one thing to know is also um, Goku Land being the master developer, right? It's, it's, it's good for, for you know, buyers or investors alike because eventually Goku might not want you know, the individual projects being launched uh, so close to each other, mm. one to two years, to be mm, fighting right. against each other. Yeah. So I think they made the pricing make sense so that, you know, Lentor mentioned Lentorio, despite being so similarly launched in terms of its date, uh, you won't get to see a lot of difference in terms of price jump. Mm. Be it w- whether there is the harmonization rule, yeah, or, rule or not. La. So I think Google Land has that power. Correct. Yeah, and correct. because a uh, single developer, that's where mm. you can see that they, they will in a way control the pricing. They do not want to cannibalize the, uh, their own projects. La. And mm. But at the same time, they also do not want to you know, make it too difficult for customers to think about you know, when they are looking for a unit right there. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, I, one more thing also is, is, let's say we, I mean, comparing the pricing also, you can see that uh, generally uh, not much disparity. Mm. I think then it boils down to the product itself. Mm. Yeah, what is the proposition of the product? What mm. is the angle that the product is geared towards uh, the, what's the target audience so Lentor mentioned I would say it's uh, if you're to compare with all the previous new launches that have been launched it's different mm. yeah it is more geared towards luxury more geared towards uh, family, uh, family, family family more yeah. geared towards having the, 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 the space having the, the leisure the recreational spaces mm. that you have uh, it's different from Lentor Modern which is uh, of course more geared towards uh, connectivity convenience uh, uh uh, amenities and mm. then your Lentor Hills also different Lentoria is different Hillock Grid is different so uh, the more important issue is also when you're buying when you're choosing a product uh, uh, choose one which is also more geared towards a larger buyer audience uh, that can also help to bolster your, your exit strategy which is what we call future. the volume effect la, correct our, yeah. our, uh, our mode analysis mm. Mm. so any closing uh, words any thoughts or I, I, I think or for Lentor mentioned wise um, b- it being you know trying to attract you know th- all the, the families who are looking to stay in the Lentor area the, the, the very reason that 95 if not 100 maybe from 99 100% of mm. you know all the units here are within one kilometer from CHIJ St. Nick's mm. uh, this is one thing that you need to consider because mm. eventually not all of the 11 plots are going to be eventually be within one kilometer mm. mm. your other choices might have to be resale in that sense yeah. so if you're looking for a new launch plus you want to have you know sufficient size yet you don't want to overpay in terms of the quantum amount mm. and yet also the last thing and the most important thing is that you want to be one click from CHI St. Nicholas I think mm. Lentor mentioned is, uh, is something that you can consider yeah. yeah, Ramsey. Yeah, so uh, I think overall, if you to compare so far all the new launches that, that have been uh, uh, in this area, uh, if you do the Lentor mention, generally yes. Uh, if you to compare PSF to PSF, mm. uh, it will be slightly on the higher range. Yeah, but I mean most importantly would be your entry quantum la. Mm. If your entry quantum is still makes sense in 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 the whole entire uh, landscape of the Lentor Hills estate, then generally uh, I would say your exit strategy is also quite bolstered with the fact that uh, you are within one km from CHIJ. There's a very strong anchor point uh, volume effect is huge your, your density effect uh, generally is also quite huge at mm. about 500 plus uh, units uh, very close proximity to Lentor Modern mm. uh, if let's say you are wondering um, my future buyer audience will they be uh, uh, they have a lot of uh, more choices I would say that Lantong Motion provides a different perspective mm. and generally I think one more thing to take note also is that you are surrounded by uh, lots of uh, landed clusters mm. uh, landed mm. clusters usually I would say landed homeowners uh, generally when they grow older they're not able to uh, maintain uh, the, their homes or maintain the lifestyle that they have in uh, the landed kind of living then generally they all but they are very used to the area they mm. love the area they, 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 are, they grew up in the area uh, then generally they also want to move within the area itself. Lentor Mansion, Lentor Mansion provides a much more suitable uh, proposition, I would say, as compared to uh, to the landed downgraders, la, as yeah. compared to the others. Yeah. I think to mm. sum it up, I think it's more towards the Lentor Mansion being the largest mm. land plot right yeah. there. Definitely, it has its own positioning, or mm. uh, being the largest, uh, and having a very good kind of like distance between the blocks, mm. facilities. You have a tennis court, fifty meters lap pool, lazy pool. Um, in fact, there's also a pet's corner on the top right here that's yeah. besides side, side gate number three. Uh, you have an area that's being de- depicted for the pets. Um, mm. 
also the other point is that one kilometers from CHIJ uh, close to Lentor Modern uh, mm. connectivity wise I think this project by itself has a lot of plus points and yes. plus also the whole entire GOKO um, DNA that is being infused mm. into this particular project so if you are looking for um, uh, own stay if you are looking for you need to buy for investment I would say that you know in terms of the pricing wise uh, it does make sense right now mm. of course we have to wait till the actual launch effect yep. uh, launch day to know the exact pricing but based on our price matrix right now we forecasting the pricing to be around the, the range that it has been announced in a sense so in a way it's still very palatable kind of pricing you can enter into the market at 1.14 for two bit one buff mm. um, dumbbell layout you know i think these are all very good back, um, pointers so do take time to look at the numbers digest them but of course if you want to have a uh, more like a consultation kind of like advice mm. from our consultants you can reach out to them uh, via the link below so that brings me to the end of this review for lentor mention we hope that you get a lot of insights into this later, uh, latest development in the Lentor area and stay tuned for our next review of our upcoming new launches um, on this particular channel in PRB Insights. Um, so with that, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.